Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another session. Uh, right. Let's just begin this session with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us could lead us in prayer. Uh, Salome, if you're there, can you please lead us in prayer? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this morning, of Father God. Thank you for this meeting, of Father God. God, I pray, Father, you will lead, Pastor, Father. You will every every word that you see is a Father God. Thank you for this time that we could have, of Father God, that we could learn from Him, that we we will learn from Him. And I pray, God, that you will lead us in everything that we do, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master, for all I've done. We give it glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Salome. All right. So uh, as we get into today's class, let's just quickly look at what we did yesterday. Uh, yesterday, we started with Chapter 2, Career Plan. We looked at uh, how it's important to know our grace, our gifts, our skills. And once we know those gifts, you know, the grace and the gifts that God has given us, we are to develop in that, right? And how do we develop? We explore opportunities. We we get input from uh, people who are experienced or from our leaders, and we drop a plan, right? Uh, we write a plan. We, you know, uh, we think about it. We can, as we discussed, we can write plans of, you know, one-year plan, five-year plan, 10-year plan, whatever uh, you feel comfortable with. And then we looked at some very important but practical things. One of them was even as we, as believers, you know, we start praying, we start seeking God. Very important is to step out, right? Uh, I, I did give you that example where, you know, I was spending time in prayer, but I was not stepping out, right? So everything must be done simultaneously. We pray, we seek God, uh, we hear from God, but we are also to step out, right? And why do we step out? It's like we are knocking on doors. We're asking God, God, open doors for us. Give us opportunity. Give me opportunities uh, to, you know, use my gifts, use my skills and talents for your kingdom. And so it's very important that we balance both of these. So let's continue from where we stopped. Uh, we, we are picking up from the point, expect unusual favor uh, uh, on your notes. You can check that. Uh, I think it's page 20 on your notes. Uh, expect unusual favor. Let's read Genesis chapter 39 and verse 21. Genesis 29 verse 31. Right. Before we read that, if if you also have questions on anything uh, in terms of this course, you have questions, you can unmute and ask. You can also uh, post the questions on your chat and uh, we'll look to answer that. All right. Genesis to 39. 39 was 21. Yes. One of us, please read. Yes, go ahead. Anybody? Genesis 39 and verse 21. Uh, Genesis 39, 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of keeper of the person, prison. Yeah, thank you, Abinas. Now, we know the story of Joseph. Right. Uh, when we read through the whole story, there was so many ups and downs. Right. Uh, early in his life, God spoke to him, said, you know, you will lead. You'll be a leader. The, your brothers will bow down before you. That made the brothers jealous. And, you know, his father loved him so much. The brothers again were more jealous. They threw him they, into this place, into the spit. He was sold as a slave. Things were going all right. Again, things went bad, right? So we see ups and downs. But here's the thing. Genesis 39, 21. The Lord was with Joseph, right? Such a comforting verse that is. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor, right? 
So as, as the scriptures, we see that many people all through the scriptures, we see that God showered unusual favor upon people. Right? When God's favor is upon our lives, the impossible becomes possible. Right? Now let's look at you know, some of the examples that are not here in this book. Let's look at Daniel. Right? Uh, Daniel was very favored. To the point that you know, when uh, when he was old and Darius comes in as the king, Darius te tells him, "No, I want you to be the leader. You should be the uh, you know the prime minister of this and coordinate everything uh, in this place." So much so that you know, even Darius knew that Daniel was a man of God, a man who had character, who had unusual favor of God. Then we look at even Nehemiah. Now, if we read the book of Nehemiah, it is, it is unusual favor. Now, picture this. You've got the, uh, you know, the people, the Babylonians. They come, they destroy Jerusalem, right? They, they break the walls, they burn it down, uh, and the walls of Jerusalem are completely broken down and destroyed. And Nehemiah is living, you know, a comfortable life in the palace. He was a cupbearer for the king. So he was living a comfortable life. And the Lord ministered to him. And he goes to the king and he says, Oh, king, how can I, buy, how can I be pleased when my, you know, my city, Jerusalem, my nation, the people are, you know, being destroyed. The walls have been broken. The burns are, the, the gates have been burned down. How can I be uh, in peace? And after that, if we read, the king, uh, the king grants all the wishes of Nehemiah. So it's basically those people, the Assyrians, the Babylonians came, they destroyed the gates, burned the place down, and they themselves paid for it and sent their own people to rebuild it again. So when we are uh, in God's will and in God's plan, we can expect unusual favor to come upon us. Now, this unusual favor is not only for ministry. Right? We can be in the workplace and God can grant us unusual favor. Right? Uh, God can give us people, you know, make us people of influence give us access to people, give us access to places, opportunities. And this is something that you and I should pray for. Lord, even as I go, grant us favor. Grant us favor. And when God's favor is upon us, whether they are people from our faith or people from other faith, it won't really matter. Because when God has planned it, God can use anybody to pour out that favor upon us, right? So from one stage of our life to the next stage, in our career, in our workplace, in our ministry, ask and pray and ask God for favor, right? Now, let me give you this little example. Uh, we were uh, in, in Mangalore. One of the things that we wanted to do was to reach out to colleges. The, the city of Mangalore has plenty of institutions. So we were new to Mangalore, and so we did some research online. We said, okay, what are the top universities? So we got a list of about five, six universities. And then we began to pray. Say, said, God, grant us favor. Grant us opportunities. Open doors. So as a church, uh, every day, we would, whenever we'd meet for 21 days of prayer or uh, every Sunday's Friday prayers, we would pray, God, grant us favor. Right? And... I would say that as a church, we received unusual favor. What happened was, uh, you know, one day we, we, we got an email saying that we can go meet with this, uh, the principal of a very reputed college here in Mangalore. So we went and we told him, we met him. And uh, when we met, met him, we told him that we, you know, we teach the word of God and uh, uh, you know, it was a Christian institution. So we teach the word of God uh, uh, in different places in Bangalore. Do you think you'll be open to doing this in, in, in Mangalore as well? So 
this this principal uh, uh, was so excited. He said, "Yes, uh, we want you to come every week, teach our students uh, the scriptures every week, right?" Uh, and then he said, "Not only this, I want you to also go to the eleventh and twelfth standard. I will speak to the principal there, and you can go there and also teach in those in that college." So in just a five minute conversation, we got opportunities in 11th and 12th and the degree uh, students, the, uh, the three year degree students. So that rounded up to about 800 odd students in a week, just teaching them the word of God. And slowly after this, it didn't stop there. This principal said, I know of other colleges and I will call them and tell them that, you know, we need to get something like this involved in our curriculum where we teach the scriptures. So he opened doors for two other colleges. And colleges after colleges began to open up, right? He said, hey, if you are going to this, one of the best colleges in Mangalore and teaching, please come to our college. And so right now we have opportunities in about seven colleges where we go every week uh, now that it's online, sometimes we do it online, but we teach the word of God to the students. Then we have also counseling our uh, sessions. We have, um, you know, uh, life skills sessions. All this happened just because of one person. And God showed favor through him to us. Just one, one principle. And he doesn't even really know us. All of this happened in five minutes. Five minute conversation. So when we ask God for favor, God can grant us not just favor, but unusual favor. You know, maybe in your business or in your work, you know, you have to do presentations. Uh, when when the favor of God is upon you, the managers or your leaders and your your bosses will say, Hey. Uh, this is something that we like. This is something that we can take forward. And it is something that will be pleasing in your leader's eyes. Why? Because the favor of God is upon it. Right? So now this does not mean that we don't prepare. Right? We prepare. We do all the preparatory work. We, you know, we didn't go to the father blank and say, you know, we want to do this. But we took a whole, you know, a curriculum. We told him these are the you know, chapters, these are the courses that we can do. These are the topics that we can cover. Uh, one of the topics is suicide and, uh, you know, uh, which is a problem and drug addiction. These are problems which can we can address the students with all these matters. So uh, we were prepared. And when he went there, we saw the favor of God. Proverbs 14.35, the king's favor is towards a wise servant but his wrath is against him who causes shame. So in our workplace, uh, now the word king can be leaders, our bosses. Uh, in our workplace, when we work in wisdom, when we work in integrity, the favor of God will be upon us. Right? So I want to encourage each one of you. It is nothing wrong to pray and say, God, grant me you know, unexpected, uh, un unusual favor. You will see that people will begin to, you know, call you. Uh, maybe, maybe in your workplace, you know, now you've not really been given any importance. But if God's favor is upon you, people will call you. You will be brought in front, right? So don't give up on that. Then. The next point, you can build only after you have settled down. So stop wandering. Now, this is a very important point. Proverbs 27 verse 8, the message translation says, People who don't settle down, wandering hither and yon, are like restless birds flitting to and fro. Now, we do understand that there will be times of transitions, in the workplace, even in ministry, 
there will be transitions, right? We talked about it yesterday. Um, if you've worked in a company for five years, you may feel, okay, this other company is getting me a better position uh, with better prospects and I feel I can do better here. Uh, why don't I shift? Yes, transitions will be there. Now, as we also discussed, each transition is usually, you know, three to four years because it helps you to grow in that, uh, in those, you know, years of working in a place. But the mistake that we may make is in a bid to, you know, to get everything easily, we may very soon, you know, transition from one place to another, right? And what happens is we may not settle down in a certain place. Restless birds don't lay, a, uh, you know, don't build a nest. They don't lay eggs. They're always flying around. They're going to one place to another always moving about and i know of plenty of young people who have gone into companies and you know a, 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 a young man that i know of uh it was 2020 january uh, he had to submit his yearly report uh, for the year 2018 and uh, he was given a deadline he didn't completed in that deadline and then he got a strong email uh, from his boss uh, yet he still you know uh, he apologized and he began to work on it uh, but it was long time long past due and finally uh, his boss got really upset and said I didn't get the review for the document for the year 2018 uh, and really you know was upset with him and shouted at him right which is understandable because, you know, the due date was already passed and uh, there was no response from him. And then when he met me, he told me uh, that in a fit of anger, he said, I'm not going to work in this place. Uh, I quit. And he just wrote that email and he quit that moment. He wrote his resignation letter and the, the, the his boss said, all right, no problem. Uh, uh, and And then later, and when his mind was cool, he sat down and he thought about what he did and he was so ashamed of what he did. He said, what have I done? You know, this job is something that uh, he really liked. Uh, it was a good opportunity, a growing company. In a fit of anger, he just put his papers down. And then to make matters worse, in 2020, February, March, during that season, COVID came in and, you know, he was, he was just down and out. He was not getting any job anywhere. Even to this day, he is still looking out for a job. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is resist the temptation of jumping from one place to another just for the sake of certain benefits, right? Uh, uh, don't, don't, you know, work in a place for six months, then work in another place for six months, then move again. No, try to settle yourself. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, things are going to be easy. Right? Sometimes you may have to drag yourself to work. Oh, I don't feel like going to work. I, I'm not happy with this. It's all right. Continue, right? Uh, it may be one year in this uh, job that you're doing and you may feel, oh, I don't want to work here. It's It's just... It's getting too much. Uh, but hear from the Lord. If the Lord is not opening any door and you feel that there's no transition required, stay on. Right? Develop in your skills. Develop in your, uh, you know, in the grace that God has given you. Right? Uh, the, the, the mistake that we make is the moment we get bored, we want to shift. Right. At the moment, we feel that, okay, this company is not good. They don't have this. We want to shift. Right. So don't we, we are not to do that, right? We, it's good to stay in a place. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not talking only about, uh, you know, corporate jobs, but I've seen people in ministry as well. They come, they work, you know, they say, oh, no, this is not something I want to do, and they just move on. Uh, you know, there are people... Uh, this young man that I met in a different state many years back, and he was saying, uh, I got a job in the, you know, I always want to be in the ministry. And he got a job as, uh, you know, he liked to preach and, you know, teach the word of God. Wonderful young man. And then he got a job in a church to write material for children's church. 
but he had to write material and uh, write stories and make a curriculum for the children's church. Uh, so he began, he was excited. He began that work. And after three, four months, he got bored. So he put his papers down and left. And then, you know, we, we were doing a conference. This is way back. Uh, and he was talking to me and he said, no, this is what happened. So I asked him why you left. He said, because I got bored of it. Uh, it was not my calling. So I had to explain to him that, you know, through these doors, even though it is children's church, you're creating material, you're equipping yourself, you're studying the word, you're creating material. You know, once you become a pastor, that's what you have to do. You have to sit and prepare, create sermons, create material. And after talking to him, he realized you know, the mistake that he made. And he said, I will go and, you know, request for another opportunity. So uh, even before we make decisions, it's very important to hear from God. It's not about our feeling, right? Hear from God. Is the Lord leading you towards a change? Look at the time frame. Look at all the other aspects involved, right? Uh, and then make decisions, right? Stop wandering around, but, uh, but, but see what you can build on. Uh, after you settle down, right? Next point, sharpen your edge, uh, which means your grace, your gifts, your skills. Uh, as you are growing, as you are in the corporate sector or in the ministry, sharpen your edge, right? Imagine a, uh, an ax. The, the, the ax is, uh, you know, it looks very nice. Right? But what if the axe, the, the point of the axe is blunt? We can look at an axe and say, oh, this is a wonderful looking axe. I think it can cut down a tree very easily by the look of it. But you won't really know it until we take the axe and you know try to cut down a branch or a tree. And if it's blunt, nothing is going to happen. Right. So in our professional careers, the grace, the gifts, everything that God has called us for, we are to grow in it, sharpen it. Maybe, you know, some things that you feel that you're not strong in and you want to grow in that. So sharpen your edge, right? Uh, sharpen the things that you are, so if there are things that you're already good at, build on it, right? Don't say, I know this, so let me learn something else. Yeah, you can also do that, but take Time, take effort, take make take energy to progress in your life, right? Uh, that's why a plan is very important because we can go past year after year after year and remain the same, right? Uh, let me give you an example. You know, uh, I'm not very technically savvy, right? Uh, I know the basics of you know computers and. Just the basics, right? Uh, we worked in the IT company. So, you know, we know Excel, Word, uh, PowerPoint, all those things. Uh, but when, when, when I joined APC, there was this campaign called the Power to Change campaign. Uh, and, uh, you know, our church was involved in this campaign also. It was a global campaign. And uh, I remember I was just new to the church, right? New stuff. And Pastor said, Paul, can you handle this? And I said, yes. But I didn't realize that, you know, it involved, uh, there was this whole software called the CHMS or, uh, and it involved a lot of technical things, a lot of technical things. Right? Now I'm good at, I, I feel my strengths are, you know, going and meeting people, praying for people, preaching, creating material, uh, you know, more of these practically oriented things. And, uh, but I got that opportunity, and uh, I was I was praying. I said, "God, I'm going to have I'm having a really tough time, uh, you know, because all technical things, and we have a uh, you know the IT team. They would use words which I have no idea about. They would say, "Can you do this on the software? Do that on the software?" And I had a really tough time, but I realized that hey. Gone are those days where ministry is only about going on the streets and standing there and, you know, uh, preaching. Uh, it's not only that. Technology, God is going to use technology in the ministry. So I have to develop. 
I have to sharpen my skills. So you know, I uh, I took it as a uh, as a as something that I want to grow in, as a challenge, and I began to learn. Was it easy? No. Uh, I think Tarun is also here on this call. I, I, many times I've called Tarun, who has helped me in so many ways. Uh, so, what am I trying to say? Just because we are not interested in something, doesn't mean God is not going to put that in our plate. Right? I was not interested in technology and all these, you know, uh, IT things. But God made me do it. He said, "You learn it." Was it interesting? No. I didn't. I, I, it was not interesting at all to me. Ask me to lead worship for one hour, two hours. We can do it, but not on the software with all those. But God expected me to learn it, and so I look back and I think, okay, I'm glad I did that because even now we're using that software, and I've become, you know, it's comfortable for me to use. And technically, I think I've improved. Right? Is it good? Yes. Is it in line with what I'm doing? Yes, but that time in the year 2012, it was not in line. I think it was 2014 when we had the power to change campaign. So, learn new things, develop new skills, and expand your skills. Don't don't just say, okay, this is what I am. This is what only I'm going to do. Right? For example, if you feel that God has called you for uh, to be a teacher, right? Uh, uh, so expand your skills, uh, learn more things, learn more ways of teaching, new ideas of teaching. Uh, now with online, you have to come up with new ideas, right? Children have to be willing to sit and listen, even though it's online, right? So new ideas, ask God to give you new uh, strategies, new uh, you know ways of communicating to the children. So develop those skills, right? And as you develop, as you make progress, you will see that you are fulfilling the plan of God in your life, right? Uh, so here, very important. I want to just emphasize on that. Just because you know God has called us to be a pastor or evangelist does not mean that whatever opportunity we get is going to be in line with that, right? So when we look at the bigger picture, God can give you something that is very unrelated to what uh, you know to what we are doing uh, what you're doing now but later on it's going to help you right uh, all right any questions any thoughts on this uh, is it all right any questions shall we go on it's good sir Yes, sir. we can go on, but I've got a question. Which page are we now? Uh, okay, I, I'm using the uh, the hard copy. Uh, so let me just check what page we are in now. So we are on chapter two. Chapter two, uh, the point of uh, the point is sharpen your edge, your grace. Uh, yeah, page 15. Yes, Samuel. Page 15. Yeah. Is that okay, Maxon? You're there? Yes, it's yeah. okay. I get it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's move to the next point, right? Take stock of things frequently, review, revise, and refine. The three R's review, refine, and revise, right? Let's read Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Yes. Could one of us please read that? Proverbs 4, verse 26. Proverbs 4.26, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Amen. Thank you, Samuel. Ponder the path of your feet. So the writer here in Proverbs, he's saying, don't just go wherever you feel like going. Right? Ponder, sit, think about the path, about the steps that you are taking. Right? Uh, don't do things out of the blue. Right? Taking, when you're taking steps, think about where you're going. Think about what you want to do, how you plan to achieve that, how you plan to 
uh, you know, uh, work out your professional life or even your family, uh, children. H- how are you planning? So ponder on the paths of your feet. Now, the word feet does not mean that wherever you walk, you look. Uh, it means your life plan. Ponder about that part. Pause. Now, maybe sometimes, you know, we get so used to working. You know, I've been working in the company for the same company for it's been one year, two years, three years, five years. And we're just doing the same thing. Now, it's very important to not get into that, you know, that cycle of uh, monotony. Uh, but we need to pause. We need to stop at times. Reflect. Review yourself. Okay, 2015, I joined this company. Right, just an example. 2015, I joined this company. Now it's 2020. It's been tw- 21. We just finished. Okay, it's been six years now. What have I achieved? Where have I sharpened my skills? Where am I looking at ahead? So frequently review yourself. Revise whatever God has put in your heart. 2015, God may have said, you know, you may have felt that you want to do, you know, something in this field. But somewhere along the line, the Lord may have impressed something else in your heart. He may lead you to a different direction. Revise. It's all right. Don't say, God, no, no, no. Can I please stick on to this itself? Because this is what I want to do. No. Right? Revise. It's all right to revise. It's all right to refine your plan. Right? Because it's not only, it's not a, it's not some, we, remember, we don't know everything that we are going to be. Right? We look at the next point, points later on also. Uh, you know, God is in control. Uh, so we make the plan, we, we ask, we surrender it to God, and let God work it out. Right? So, but here's the important thing review your plan, revise it, read it again, think about it. And wherever there needs to be some changes or refining to be made, do that. Now, for example, uh, I'm in the year 2015. I've made a, you know, a document, a plan till 2020. But in 2018, we had to make this transition to another city and look at APC Mangalore. Now, that was not in the document. Right? 2015, I didn't know that I'll be going to another city with my family. But the work, the ministry was something that was always continuing. But there was a transition. There was a change. So when I look back 2015 and, and now, there's so many things that you know, have been revised, so many things that have been uh, you know, refined. Yet, uh, it, has imp- it has improved. It has benefited my life. So the same way, take stock of things. Don't let months and years go by just the way it is. Take stock of things. Uh, uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, growing families, remember this young couple in, uh, you know, in our church, they uh, they, they we were speaking together and they said it's so hard to manage with one child it's so difficult the child is so small and you know we have to you know plan out ex- execute things either one of us should go and i completely understood it because you know we have two small kids as well uh, but i encouraged them and i said look it's just a part of life the children are going to grow they're not going to be the same Right? Children are going to grow. Uh, my kids were small. Children will go through, you know, those kind of fevers and those uh, those tough times and the good times as well. So children will grow. It's a part of life. You know, five years from now, my children will be, you know, twelve years old, and they're grown up. So it's a part of life. So we don't give up in that season. Okay, no, it's very difficult. So, uh, you know, there's another couple that I had met and they were speaking to me and they said, no, we don't have any children. 
uh, I mean, it's their wish. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I mean, you don't have children. Why? Uh, they said no because it is too much of a headache. We have to, you know, uh, look after, and you know, nobody comes to help, and there's no helpers and all of this. And I realized that, you know, sometimes we need to be willing to come out of our comfort zone. When you review your life, uh, when you make a review, when and 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 you feel that there are some things that should change, uh, you can revise, you can refine it. Now, I'm not against, you know, children not having children. Just trying to say that the reason for not having children was, you know, uh, can be changed. Uh, uh, and so uh, there are times we will have to take stock of things. Take stock of things, right? Here is what I have achieved financially in the year 2020. Make a budget. We're going to be talking about all of that budgeting, everything later on as well. So we can look at that. Right, let's go to the next point. To grow, we need to change, right? First Corinthians 13, 11. Yes, one of us, please read that. First Corinthians 13, 11. To grow, we need to change. First Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Christopher. Right. Paul is writing it so perfectly here. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. And I understood as a child. But as we grow, as we mature, we put away childish things. Right. So whether in the workplace whether in the ministry growth happens through a process of change you know, you know spiritually we are changed glory to glory strength to strength but maturity happens when we go through life and we go through and accept the changes that are there in life right nothing in this world is constant change will keep changing right uh, uh, many things in our professional life, in our spiritual life, there will be changes, right? Some of these changes may be easy changes. Some of these changes may be critical or difficult changes or drastic changes. Changes can be anticipated. Changes can be, you know, unexpected, right? Now, the year 2020, nobody knew we're going into a whole season of online church and online working from home maybe you know 10 years back the whole concept of work from home was very 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 limited in in especially in nations like india we believe get up go to work nine to five work come back uh, but the whole concept of work from home right changes this is a drastic change and looking forward 20 uh, you know, coming years as well. Uh, many companies uh, are, are shutting down. Their offices are closing because, you know, uh, they work from, the employees are working from home. Why should they pay, you know, high amounts of lease and, you know, keep those offices open when people are working from home and uh, the outcome or the productivity is the same or even better? So many companies have gone to fully working from home. So some changes may come upon us unexpectedly. Some changes, we need to take it up, right? We can now, for example, now we can look ahead. We can say, okay, let's focus on, uh, you know, media. We can really, you know, do ministry through the media. So we can do that, right? Now, as long as change is moving you further in your life plan, go with it, right? If there are changes in your life, in my life, um, and it's moving you forward. Go with it. Uh, don't say, no, no, I don't want to change. No. Enjoy the seasons of change. Enjoy the seasons where, you know, you're stable. Everything is, you know, uh, the stability. Enjoy the seasons where it's not stable as well. Right? Uh, but put away childish thinking. Put away childish thoughts. Become mature. Right? 
uh, even in the ministry, it is it is sad to say that many leaders who are many many years in the ministry, uh, but they still, you know, immature in certain things. Why? Uh, because you know they're not ex uh, uh, accepting the change happening around. Now, there was this one pastor who came up to me and said, I don't like the new gospel songs. I like only the hymns. Uh, they have you know, a lot of weightage of the word of God in them. I don't like the new gospel songs. Uh, and so there's nothing wrong in the new gospel songs. There's nothing wrong with the hymns. Yes, the hymns are powerful, but the gospel, the new worship bands are powerful as well. Many of songs are written out of a place where they've gone through difficulties or seasons in their own lives. And many songs are directly from the word of God. Right, So uh, we should be willing to change. Right? The way ministry was done 15 years back and the way ministry is done now may be very different. Right, uh, So enjoy the changes that God will put in your life. Look for clarity as you keep journeying. Proverbs 4.18, uh, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Now, remember, very important, things may be unclear. We don't know the where, the why, the when, how, and which. We may be in a dead-end job. We don't know what is ahead of us, right? We don't know. Some things may be completely disinteresting. Here's the important thing. Continue to pursue and ask God for clarity. Ask God for clarity. God, is this something that I should put my foot into? Is this something that is going to help me fulfill the plan of God in my life? Is this something that will, uh, that my, the gifts and the grace that you've given me, is it something that I can do in my life, right? So ask God for clarity. Avoid the donkey and the horse syndrome. Let's read Psalms 32, 8 and 9. Psalms 32, 8 and 9. Go ahead. One of us, Rupa, can you please read that? Sure, sir. Psalm 32, 8 and 9. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed, bit and brittle, else they will not come near you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Rupa. Right. So what a what an important instruction. God has promised to teach us, to lead us, to guide us. He will empower us. God has promised all of that. But God also tells us, don't be like the donkey. And don't be like the horse. Now, if you look at the donkey, you keep pushing it. You Sometimes you tell it, come, come. It does not come. It will just be so stubborn. It will sit in one place. right? It, it will just not move. You know, uh, there are times when a donkey can be hungry. And if you put a plate of, you know, food, it is sometimes so lazy to get up and come and eat it. It can be so stubborn that the food, the plate of food may have to come to the donkey. But donkeys are stubborn they, and very lazy animals. Very reluctant. Don't be like the donkey. Or don't be like the horse where the horse, you know, it just wants to run. It just wants to go. And sometimes, you know, that's why the horse have a bridle. Uh, so the, the person can control the horse because they can go wild and just go anywhere, run here and there, just go anywhere. That is why you see these, uh, you know, the horse racing. They have the bridle which controls them. Say, okay, you need to go left. You need to go right. You need to, you know, slow down here or go fast here. They need to be controlled. Why? Because they can just go anytime, anywhere, do anything. So the writer here in Psalms 32 is saying, don't be like the uh, donkey, too lazy, too reluctant, or don't be like the horse, too quick, going anywhere, doing anything. But be wise. 
Avoid both of them. Have a stability in your life. Plan well, right? Uh, remember to walk in step with God. Don't be in a hurry or don't be too lazy to take decisions. Sometimes in our, in our professional life or in our uh, ministry, in ministry, we may have to make quick decisions, right? The decision has to be taken. I don't say, oh, no, let me wait for the next uh, uh, you know, month or so, and then I'll make the decision. Sometimes decisions need to be quick. Sometimes you need to sit, you need to ponder on decisions to be made, right? So avoid these two syndromes. Uh, I love that verse. It says, uh, you know, uh, we need to have a sober mind. Sober mind. Not too high, not too low. See, sober. Just be calm uh, through all the seasons. Be sober. Right? Uh, have control over your thoughts, over your decisions, over your planning. Have control over it. Right? Remember that even as you step out, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. I love this verse, Psalms 37, 23. I'll just read that. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he falls, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hands. Now, there are plenty of times we will make mistakes. We may not hear the word. We may not hear God clearly. And we may make a decision and make a mistake and we may fall. But this verse has always helped me. It says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The Lord will lift us up back. He will not despise us. right? Uh, I've had my share of mistakes, plenty of them. Right? Just because I'm teaching this does not mean I've not made mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes. right? But one thing I can testify and say is the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The Lord will uphold us. And the mistakes that we've made, we learn from them. That's maturity. We learn from those mistakes. Don't make repeat those mistakes again. right? So be assured, even in the decisions we make, we may feel uh, this is a right decision. You may feel that God is leading you towards it. But at the end of the day, it may look like, hey, it's a wrong decision. Uh, remember, the steps of a good man are ordered by God. God is ordering your steps. Right? Uh, trust God even when you can't figure out everything. Right? Nothing happens uh, on our own. We can't you know, figure out all things by ourselves. We don't know what 2022 holds. Right? We don't know what 23 holds. We can't figure out anything on ourselves. Uh, but make your plan. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Right? Uh, things will change. Things will not change. By planning, we are being good stewards of God. We're saying, God, whatever you've given me, uh, I'm being a good steward. Or whatever talent, grace, material blessings, everything that you've given me, uh, I'm being a good steward. I'm planning ahead for uh, the coming years. Finally, step up to your mountain. When, it, when we use the word mountain, uh, we're talking about the spheres of influence. Now, if you see in your notes, uh, there are seven main spheres of influence, which is family, uh, an institution set up by God, which we have to, you know, as, as if we have children and as parents, we have to be able to look after our family. Paul writes and he says, if you don't, if you can't look after the family, how can you look after the body of Christ, the church? Right? So it's very important family to religion, which includes the church, uh, education. Many of us may be school teachers or uh, uh, in the professional field of uh, education. Then you've got media, right? Uh, 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 newspapers, TV ads, internet, arts and entertainment, uh, sports, all these areas. Business. Many of us may be in small businesses, big businesses, uh, business transactions being made or government uh, in the government sector, whatever field we are in, God is encouraging us and he's saying, step up to your mountain, go take your mountain, right? Does not mean if somebody has a job in the government sector, 
that God is not with them. God is with them. Right? In between all the things that are happening, maybe there's corruption, there's hatred, there's jealousy, all those things. But in between all of that, God can grant us unusual favor. And God can use us like Daniel in the government sector. He's able to do it. Right? So here's the important thing. We have to find out what sphere God has called us for. If we already know it, that's great. Work towards it. So we close with this. Uh, we finished chapter two. Uh, we'll come back next week. We'll begin with chapter three. All right, let's close in prayer. Uh, I'll ask maybe uh, uh, Maxon, can you lead us in prayer? Uh, close, close in prayer, please. <clears throat> okay, let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gain insight from you. I worship you this time for allow us. I pray for everyone, wherever we are, we are going to have a break for another class. Lord, lead us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Maxon. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Monday. God bless.